Shalom, Say Chance Tony from Kingdom Life Tabano Kampala, Uganda, welcoming you to our Blueprint Kingdom Global Summit, running from the 23rd to the 27th of August 2021. The summit will be featuring our guest preacher, Bishop Charles E. Wallace from Baton Lounge, Louisiana, USA. Not missing out, Apostle MMK from UK together with Associate Pastor and Elder Andrew Alba from Dubai. Of course, with Dr. Carol Pounds from Uganda, myself inclusive, join the ride and let's explore the wonders of the blueprint. The summit will be streamed live on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, Kingdom Life Tabernacle Uganda, as well as on our online radio, which is ray.radio12345.com. Give thanks to the Lord for his love and his forever. Oh, hello, and welcome. Uh, 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 to cut them. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> beats on beats on the hit list every Sunday, 3 to 4 p.m. Only on Rain.Radio, Trade Your 12345.com. For other services, we do have our youth service that's just started, 4 p.m. To 5 p.m. and during the day we had our 7 a.m. service that runs from 7 to 9 a.m. and then 9 30 to 11 30 being the Luganda service. Throughout the week we do have morning devotions that are led by our team leader Apostle Tony Sechanzi running Monday through Friday and then we also have Bible studies running every Wednesday that are from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. In case you do not have a life unit, be sure to drop it in the comments below and let us know. If not, be sure to contact the pastoral team with the numbers that have been put up the screen. Now in the times that we're in, as a church, we do believe in SOPs and we encourage you wherever you are, sanitize, keep your masks on at every one point that you go. So from that, you are very welcome to our service and before we go ahead, let us have an opening prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you because this is the day that you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that you will take full preeminence of this day. We ask that you will come in our midst and guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, hey, hey. See you inside for the praise and worship. Shalom.
Shalom, Sechans Tony from Kingdom Life Tabana Kampala, Uganda, welcoming you to our Blueprint Kingdom Global Summit, running from the 23rd to the 27th of August 2021. The summit will be featuring our guest preacher, Bishop Charles E. Wallace from Baton Lounge, Louisiana, USA. Not missing out, Apostle MMK from UK together with Associate Pastor and Elder Andrew Alba from Dubai. Of course, with Dr. Carol Pounds from Uganda, myself inclusive, join the ride, let's explore the wonders of the blueprint. The summit will be streamed live on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, Kingdom Life Tabernacle Uganda, as well as on our online radio, which is ray.radio12345.com. Well, I welcome everyone to our weekly youth service. And uh, this Sunday, I'm lately, I'm delightedly honored and glad to have been given an opportunity to preach in our youth service. I thank the team, the youth team, for giving such a such a, a chance to be on air for our service this Sunday. Well, I want to open up, I, I pray to God that he opens up every, every person's heart, every youth out there, every young person, even the old people who are watching us, that we open up our hearts and we listen to what God is going to say to us today. <sighs> I want to say that um, I have a simple topic for us today as young people to know more about who God is and what God can really do in our lives. We have a theme that's ongoing in church, the theme of love. And uh, since I'm my son in the house, I'll just personalize that theme to our young men, our young men and, and women, so that we can understand this thing called love in the more. Well, uh, we'll begin by just looking at what, what love is. Love is just something, it's a hard thing something of the heart and uh, the Bible says in, uh, in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world God loved us even before we loved him that's what Roman, the book of Romans say that he loved us before we even loved him so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so John, uh, John, John is a disciple of, uh, of, of, of Jesus Christ and, and he's only telling us that uh, in his gospel that uh, besides everything, uh, God loved the world so much. Even if he's the creator, he loved us so much. Even if he's our maker, he loves us so much. Even if he owns the entire world that he, even one day he can wake up and destroy it because of our sin, he loved us so much. And this this evening, I just want us to look at the various types to see how God loves us as young men and women. But then we need to understand what love is. Um, point number one, the love of God is an equivalence to the fear of God. The love of God is an equivalence to the obedience to his commands. And um, many people have run to me, a couple of uh, young men have been running to me, young women, trying to, to understand what the love of God is because uh, it is something people, many people at times they, they, they misunderstand. Many people try to define it many ways, using scriptures, using what. And uh, it's, not, it's not philosophical. It is something simple. The love of God is equivalent, or it is the fear of God. Because for God loved us so much, the only thing you can give him back is by obeying his commands, is by being obedient to him. Praise the Lord. Um, what, what is obedience to in this context as a young person? Obedience of God means that uh, you, are, you are looking at doing everything God is saying, no matter what. Because many times we try to define, we, we define uh, love in our own context, in our own situations. 
But the whole God of heaven, the whole maker of heaven and earth, did not define love according to how big he is. He defined love in the context of the entire human population. He loved us beyond everything else. So, by him loving us, let us love him back. Then the entire equation of love shall balance. So, the obedience of God means that we are walking a holy life and then we are doing the right things. We are being righteous before God and we are walking the holy life because the holy life comes after walking right with God. The more you walk, with right, you, you walk right with God is the more you become holy. And the more you become holy is the more you become like him. And that's the, reason, the only reason why you call the Christian. Praise the Lord. The, the, the reason you call it a Christian is because you are supposed to be Christ-like. But many of us want to call ourselves Christians, yet we are not even 1% of who Christ is in whatever we do in our lives. So, the fear of God, which is the love of God, is, 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 it is an equivalent to holiness and righteousness. So, every time that you are practicing holiness and righteousness, you are having the true love for God. As a young person, many times we want to complain uh, about what God is doing for us. Many times we want to complain about uh, what God has not done for us. Because uh, in the book of Romans 8, 28, the Bible says that all things happen for the good for those who love the Lord, they are God. But you are still alive and nothing has happened that you will say that ah, probably the Lord God is not on my side. And I know my tell people out there that uh, the worst thing to ever happen to a person is probably them dying or being killed. But you are still alive and still complaining about the love of God. You are still alive and living. You ate food last night eh? because we are in the, we are in the period of, four days of uh, 21 days of uh, prayer and fasting. You even, you even broke your fast yesterday with food and still complaining. Hmm? So let us learn the, the true love of God. And the true love of God, we are saying, number one, is the fear of God. And the fear of God is obeying the commandments of the living God. His commandments are found in the Bible. Please, let us read our Bible. As young people, it is our responsibility to read the Bible. No one is going to read it for you. Not your mom, not your pastor, no, not, not, not your youth leader. The Bible is your responsibility. The Bible is your responsibility once again. So, the, the fear of God, we are looking at believing in God's love. Yes, he loved us, but you believe in it. Are you believing in these commands that he's giving you? Are you able to, to sit down and be like, God, you know what, today I have decided to just follow you no matter what conditions, no matter what I'm going through. Because when you look at the prominent men and women in the, in the Bible, they followed God at, at whatever cost, at whatever it costed them. They looked at God as their entire source, as their entire redemption. Praise the Lord. Now, since, uh, since God loved us so much, that whoever believed in him will have that everlasting, everlasting life. The everlasting life comes as in, from one point of view, and that point of view is the view of forgiveness of sins. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins, and this is the life that we shall live in forever. A sin-free life is everlasting life. Many of us think that everlasting life will begin when you die. No, everlasting life begins from here. That's why we, we call it everlasting. Praise the Lord. So, as long as you are born again and you believe in God and you have the true love of God, which is the fear of God, which is the obedience of his commands, then you have everlasting life. Everlasting life begins the day you, be, you, be, you believe in God and you, and you are born again. Praise the Lord. We are still saying that uh, if there is no love, there is darkness. When, when, when we read uh, 1, John, uh, 2, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 10 to 12, where there is no love, there is darkness. Praise the Lord. Let us, let us just go through it here. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling him. Meaning that he, if you don't love your brother, if there is no love, you are living in the dark. And remember Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the light. So 
If you don't love your brother, you are just removing this scripture away from, the, from your Bible. Praise the Lord. So, unless you love your brother back, you are not in the light. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus Christ is the light. Only those, only those in the light can glorify God. Hallelujah. So, if you don't love your brother, you are living in the dark and you can never glorify God. As young people, there are many things that come up our lives every other day. Things that we look at our brothers and sisters in the, and you're like, ah, that guy, that, la, that guy, ah, ah, I don't, I, I just don't, he's not, I'm not a fan of him anymore. No, your role is to love because God loved you. Love, love, love. That is a responsibility to us because Christ loved you first. Many of us, we want to own Christ, eh? but Christ is for the entire world. Christ is for the entire world because he's the maker. He owns all the sinners. He owns all the wizards. In the previous service, I suppose we are saying that Christ is the owner of every, of every thief. He's their maker. Of every robber, he's their maker. Of all the prostitutes, of all the gays, the lesbians, he is their maker. But when you don't love back, you are not living in the light. And when you live in the dark, you are not living for God. Praise the name of the living God. So, if um, the true love for God is to keep us from sin. So, every time that you are practicing the true love of God, and you say the true love with the fear of God, and here I was just trying to break it down that where there is no love, there is darkness. So, when there is no true love for God, we are only keeping sin around us. Because wherever there, is, wherever there is love, there is no sin. That's why Paul says that love covers a multitude of sins. Praise the name of the living God. Um, um, I'll go briefly to, 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 to let us read uh, John, John the Gospel 5.16. We, we see something, some, some mystery here. John 5.16. Because uh, th these guys, you know, before Christ came, many, some of the Jews, uh, they, they believed a lot that uh, he would be this very big king, this very big, probably big prophet who would speak large volumes of words. But, and thereof did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. The, the, these guys, they thought uh, Christ would be this big guy. But remember, he said he's the king of kings. And all they thought about was, who is this king who has come to take over the, our kingdom? And in their hearts, they grew. The love in their hearts got wasted away. Praise the Lord. So, Christ for him, he was doing everything out of love. He did everything out of love. He didn't say, ah, because this, this guy never gave taste to die, I'll not love him back. Because this wizard, he did everything, he did the sorcery in the night, I'll not love them back. But still, the Bible says that uh, it's the Lord who causes rain to fall on both the righteous and the wicked. Praise the Lord. So, where there is love, there is light. Where there is no love, there is darkness. Praise the name of the living God. And then we understand that God is love. Um, since we have said that, that, uh, that the love of God is the fear of God. Now, the fear of God has, uh, has two sides. Remember, the life we live is either a blessing or a curse, isn't it? And uh, when you look through the entire Bible from the time that the Jews started their journey, the Lord, the Lord was telling them day and night that whatever you're going to do, is either going to result into a blessing and a curse. Praise the Lord. So, the, the love of God, when you don't love him back, the way I said, when you live in the dark, you are going to live under a curse. And the only pay for a curse is death. Now, the payout for love is by doing the commandments of, of God, and the payment for doing his commandments and walking in his light is everlasting life. Praise the name of the living God. So, we, we understand that God's love is alongside his justice and wrath. 
God's love has the friendly bit and then the judgment side. Many times we have, we have many gospels these days that, are, that only look at the loving side of Jesus Christ. Yes, it is very good. It is the power of God. But then we need to remind the people that there is the judgment side of Christ. And that is the bad side of Christ. It's not the bad side, but it is the result of our wrongdoing. Because incidentally, we are all destined for hell. But Christ got his life. His, his life, <coughs> uh, many times uh, when we are doing things, there, there are always people who say, we are sacrificing this one. Probably you have a, you have a position at office, and this position probably is going to cost some people their jobs. Eh? Some people's salary will be costed. But here, Christ's life was costed on our behalf. So, at the end of the day, we have the judgment side, and then we have the loving side. Unless we, unless we want Christ from the loving side, from, from, both si from both sides, we will not understand the love of Christ. Praise the name of the living God. As a young person, just know that Christ has two sides. Christ is love, but Christ is the judge. Is the judge, is the judge for both the living and the dead. Praise the name of the living God. It is a fact that I cannot, uh, I cannot try to, to put uh, icing on it. Praise the Lord. So, number one, the love of God is the fear of God. Number two, the love of God brings about perfection and completion. Give us, give us some, um, give us some, um, give us some um, Matthew 5.45. Matthew 5.45. Yes, here, here we go. And we shall read that, we shall read through 48. That, that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he makes his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and send his rain on the just and on the unjust. We, we, we go on 40, 46. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even, do not even the, public, the, the, the publicans, eh, the world, do the same. And if you salute your, your brethren only, what do you more than those people out there, outside there? Do not even the publicans do so. 48. Be ye therefore perfect. This is what I want here to bring. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. And we are saying that the love of God brings about perfection. It brings about completion. The love of God is what completes the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The reason, the reason Jesus spent less time to make people understand or know him, because it is because the completion, Jesus Christ, Jesus, the, the love of God just came in to complete the whole picture of who God is. Remember, God is your maker. God is your justifier. God is your redeemer. God is whatever good thing you want him to be. But then the love aspect completes the entire circle. Praise the Lord. There is no perfection without love. There is no completeness without love. And I really believe that the reason why really God uh, sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross was because in his heart something was missing. Since that, uh, the time that Adam missed, uh, missed it out. It was like the completion of who I am is through the love that I have to offer to the human, to the, to the, to the human race. Jesus Christ, he, lo he loved the Jews. He loved the people of his time. He loved them and accepted them the way they were. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, as a young person, of course, I would like to associate myself with the pe people of my class. Eh? People who we flow in the same rhythm. Eh? People that... That I'll look, a person who I look at and I'll be like, today I'll give you a curtain cake, and tomorrow they they can offer that curtain cake back to me, probably. Okay. But then, uh, who the love of Christ is the love that loves beyond what we expect back. Okay. The love you should offer out to your brother or to your sister is the love whereby you don't expect anything back. 
because Jesus Christ loved you when you had nothing. It's the same way that we should love people when they have nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us read First John chapter two. First John two five. First John two five, and we get something here. So we are seeing that the love of God brings about completion. First John chapter two, verse five. But 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 whoso keeps his word in him, really, verily, is the lad is the is the love of God perfected. Praise the Lord. But who, whosoever keeps the word of God in him is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Now, based on this scripture here, we are looking at uh, the perfection of God. Remember, God, God, God says that I be a holy because he's holy. Now, holiness is, is, the, is, the, is the perfection. Is a, if we are looking at a perfect God, and uh, when he says that, be a holy because he is holy. He's not trying to say that, uh, let us love him back the way he loved us. And we can't say, we can't love God. We can't love God when we don't love our own brothers who are physical. Now, if I, if I, if I, if I cannot love Francis, who I see every day, eh? How can I love God for God's sake? Hmm? You cannot love something. You cannot love something spiritual more than the something that you have that is physical more to you. Yeah? That, that's really that's very unpractical. Praise the Lord. So, the love of God, if you keep his commands, this is when the love of God is perfected. So the love of God brings about perfection. Yeah? We are perfected when we are in the true love of God. You're looking out for, for being completed. You are looking out for being perfected. You are looking out for, for being holy because the Lord said that be a holy since he's holy. Practice the true love. The true love of God. By loving your neighbor as you love yourself and loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything that is within you. Because um. I believe by the coming of Jesus Christ, people expect something new. Yeah? You see, many times when we, when we have, uh, when probably when we, are, when we are doing politics and uh, politics, politics is going on, when, when we think about the other opponents than the, the incumbents, we think uh, these people are going to do new things. And I really believe uh, when Jesus Christ came during that period, people thought, ah, I mean, this guy, this guy has come. This guy even turns, turns stones into bread. This guy makes food for us. This guy makes, he makes miracles. There should be something new about this king. Praise the Lord. But then, <laughs> but then uh, the only thing that, uh, that God is looking at here is not, is not from, is not, is not from, uh, is not, is, is not philosophical. It's not from, uh, you, you will not go in the books, in the library and search for it. Praise the Lord. Because uh, if you love God, then there is no need of supervision. You will naturally stop sin. This is where completion, this is where perfection comes in. Praise the, praise, praise the name of the, of the living God. You young man who is watching me right now, you young woman who is watching me right now, the grace of God is sufficient. The grace of God is so wide. The Bible says that as it is from east to west, that's the way the Lord has loved us. And as it is from heaven to the earth, is the way he forgets our sin every other day. But then, if you love God, there is no need for you to be supervised, to, to be, supervised, to, to, to be eh, pampered around, to, for you, every person to, to, to be calling you every time. Have, have you done this? I remember when I, when I, when I, when I, when I got born again. Eh, I had uh, I have a brother. <coughs> He's called Tony. Tony normally, normally could check on me. Ah, what now? What are you doing? Where are you? Eh? Many times uh, when I call um, some of our youth, I ask them, eh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you now? What are you doing? And some of them feel offended. But then, uh, if you really love God, there is no need for you to be pushed around to do what is right. You will naturally stop sin because sin. 
and love do not connect. I hear many people saying that uh, the grace, the grace of God is sufficient, but the grace of God is not sufficient when you are sinful every day, when you are doing sin every day. Yes, sin can be done the first day, the second day, the third day, but not the fourth day, not the fifth day. No, 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 no. That is wrong. You, you are only manipulating the grace of God if you keep sinning every other day. Yes, you are a young person. I know you have the desires. You have, what, you have a picture of what you would want to do in Christ. But if you don't stop sin, you are abusing the grace of God. And hence, the love of God is not there. Hallelujah. The love of God... Uh, so, point number one, we said the love of God is the fear of God. Point number two, the love of God brings about perfection and completion. Let us look at point number three here. God's love is unconditional. I've, I've talked about it briefly. But now, if you go back and look at um, John 3.16, how God uh, packaged this love. Because uh, this love is really, is not like the common love that we have, that we know about. Because God's love is, is a different one. It is, it is incomparable to nothing else. The love of God is, you can't compare it to money. You can't compare it to your husband or wife. The love of God is not compared to your girlfriend or boyfriend. The love of God is not compared to, to gold or silver. It is not, it can never be. Because all these things perish away. Remember, the Bible says that God is love, isn't it? Hmm? And still the Bible says that uh, the world, the earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. Uh, since God is love, but, but the word of God is God himself, as, as, as uh, according to John, to John 1, 1, eh? in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. So the word, the word of God is God himself. And, the, and God himself is love. So the word of God is love. Praise the Lord. So we are saying this love here of God is not compared to anything else. It will never pass away. It will, it will never stop. Praise the Lord. This love will never pass away. It will never stop. It is everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. Okay. I mean me, if I was God... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, these guys, in, uh, the, the, the Jews are in, uh, in the way and say, I mean, uh, these guys, I would even just cane them. Eh? Because God showed them the best of his, of his love. Eh? He rained manna for them. He did miracles for them. When they lacked water, still he did them a favor and gave them water. But when they reached somewhere, in a, a very simple difficulty, they would say, ah, ah, you know what, Moses? Let's go back to Egypt. Egypt was better. But since God's love is not compared to anything else, God still loved them. Just imagine yourself, where, where we, you were still a sinner. Eh? Even whatever you're doing, just imagine yourself, whatever you're doing, God still loves you the way you are. God still loves us the way we are. Because when you get born again, it is, it is on a rare occasion that you'll stop sin immediately. Incidentally. But God still loves you, even you, whatever you are doing. Whatever goes on in your life still loves you. I've seen people who have backtracked. Eh? Some people call it backsliding, but me, I call it backtracking on the grace of God. Eh? But God still loves them and he picks them up. So this love is not compared to anything else. This love is similar to this. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. The, the, the word, the world is tired of condemnation. It needs love and acceptance. That's a quote from Miles Monroe. Now, we, we are talking about love. And the love that we're talking about is the love of God, which is reflected in the love you have for your fellow person, for your fellow friend, for your fellow man. Yeah, I don't, I'm not talking about the other love that you think about. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about the, the, the love of God, the love you have for 
the true love you have for another person. Praise the Lord. So, Melvin is saying that the, la the world is tired of laws, it is tired of things, it is tired of uh, policies, it is, it is tired of uh, mm, agendas. The world, all the, what the world wants is love and acceptance. You may be a leader out there, a youth leader out there, and all your people, all what the people want is love and acceptance. You may be in a home and you are, you are the eldest yeah. You are the eldest, probably. And now a time comes when your father or mother leaves you with, with the responsibility of looking after your siblings. And you have, you have, the, you have the authority at that moment. Those, those kids are not looking for, for whatever you're going to tell them. People who are working in those working environments, in those companies, in those institutions... Those workers are not looking for laws and policies. These people are looking for love and acceptance. I mean, even me, I'm tired of whatever law is around, whatever policy, or oh, what. If I, I mean, if you show love and acceptance before people, these people will love you back. People will do what they have to do. People will do, people's lives will be turned around just because they have been loved and accepted. The people outside there who don't know that they are loved. There's a tribe in India, as I was watching a certain, a certain video, a certain music video of, uh, of, of, uh, of Hillsong, and uh, certain, a certain tribe of people, they live by the sea. And for them, they believe that they are not better than, they are not any better than animals. Can you imagine? You are a young person and you don't believe in yourself. I mean, if I just try to if I just try to define who you are in Christ, you even you even get scared. Hmm? You are loved by the God, by the King Himself. No matter who has hated you, no matter who does not love you back, no matter whatever is going around you, no matter the situation around you, you are loved by the King of Kings, by the Lord, by the Lord of Lords, because His love prevails amidst every situation. His love prevails. I mean, it's every sin. I mean, even when you sin, this God of heaven is looking at you for you to repent and turn back to him. Praise the Lord. So, let us love people back. Let us love people. Let us accept people the way they are. You see, Jesus used the best trick. Incidentally, people don't just want to imitate what, what Christ did in institutions. Jesus picked people who were very, who were not of any noble, noble birth. People who were nothing. I mean, the Simon Peter, those guys were fishermen on the seas. By Bill, by the time a fisherman was, those guys used to smell. Jesus used, used the, ta the taxmen who were not loved by the society. Just imagine eh, people who pick licenses, who collect taxes from people. People are not loved. Hmm? It, these are people that Jesus Christ picked. People who, who, who had no position in the communities that we are living in. But Jesus Christ used the trick of loving these people and accepted them the way they were. So as a young person doing whatever you are doing, as a youth leader out there, as a pastor, the youth pastor who has followers, who has people who believe in him, as a manager, as a father, as a mother, what, what kind of love are you transferring to people around you? What kind of love and the people, uh, uh, what perception of love is, is, is it, uh, are you showing people out there? Because even me myself, I want to be loved. Trust me, I, I want to be loved. I want to be loved. Hallelujah. And then lastly, the problem, of, the problem of, of this world is because people are not willing to love a little more. Hallelujah. The problem that we have in the economy is because people are not willing to love more. The problems we have as young people is because people are not willing to love more. The problem you are doing, those weird things in the night, eh? You see, young people, we have, we have weird things. 
I mean, I hear masturbation. We have uh, there is there's even gays in in the country. I have friends. I have a friend of mine who called me. I think last week this guy is going to wear this fellow man in the U.S. Huh? The problem, whatever problem that we are going through as young people, is because there is no love. We are not loving more. Trust me, if we loved a little more, we will not be experiencing the downturns we have in the economy today. If we loved more, we will not, we will not be experiencing the, 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 the harsh climatic change that we have right now. If we loved more, we will not, we will not be destroying uh, the natural environment that's around us. Because if we loved more, we'd be caring about the future. If we loved more, we'd not be stealing. There would be no corruption in government if we loved more. But these days, there's even corruption in church. Praise the Lord. That is a church that was taken to court. A born again, a Christian church. Najitualamu court, being taken to court. Over corruption. Praise the Lord. So, all these problems are coming out of the fact that there is no love that we are practicing as people, as young men, as young person out there where you're working. Look at everything. Look at every problem and diagonize it. Eh? I don't want to speak like a, like a doctor. There's a term that I would, I would have really loved, loved to use, but I'll spare it for today. Look at every problem and, as a solu and the only solution to that problem is love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we'll have a series of these. Um, we are just beginning. And uh, we shall explore, explore more about love as young people. Because it is love that sustains your salvation and your faith. Praise the Lord. So I have talked about love. And the only love, the only true love we have is the love of Christ. If you are outside there and you don't know that you, you really want to experience the true love of Christ, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, help me to know you more. Forgive me my sins, the sins I know and those that I don't know. Lord, I believe in you and I want to be like you. I want to, to flow in the love that I've heard about today. The unconditional love. The love which is not attached to anything else but the true love of Christ. Lord, come into my heart. I want to experience you. Lord, I want to have this thing called love as a young person. And after praying this prayer, you say amen. I encourage you to, to look around for a good church, for a good, a good Bible teaching church. You see, a good, a good church is a, is a church which teaches the word of God. Not only preaching the word, but teaching the word so that people can understand. Praise the name of the living God. So look around for a church. If you fail to find one, you come to Kingdom Life in, Chi, in Chirinya, Chikongo. We will be glad to, 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 to welcome you and have you as our new member. And as the, as the youth ministry for your youth, trust me, we welcome you most. Hallelujah. So if you say that prayer, look around for church and grow yourself as a believer. It's your responsibility to, to be taught and to grow. It is, it is, it is your responsibility to be taught because God makes us grow. It is God who grows us in salvation. But we have a responsibility as people to carry on. Praise the name of the living God. If you have your offertory, please, uh, you get it out at this time. And I'll pray for it to God. Thank you for the gift that, that we have, for the offering that we have. Lord, we pray that you bless it. Bless the giver. Bless their businesses. Bless whatever they are going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. You can send your offering to the numbers that are on your screen. The phone numbers are in the name of Tony Malcolm Bato. Please, uh, when, you, when, you, when you send uh, your offering by mobile money, confirm that the name that appears is Tony Malcolm Bato. You can do direct bank transfers. If you're working out there and you are being paid through the bank, you can do a transfer to our ABSA bank as per the number, the account number on your screen. I want to say thank you very much for listening to me today and I look forward 
for you the more times in the more series that we'll have through the theme called love. Thank you very much. God richly bless you. Shalom. Shalom, Sechans Tony from Kingdom Life Tabano Kampala, Uganda, welcoming you to our Blueprint Kingdom Global Summit, running from the 23rd to the 27th of August 2021. The summit will be featuring our guest preacher, Bishop Charles E. Wallace from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, USA. Not missing out, Apostle MMK from UK together with Associate Pastor and Elder Andrew Alba from Dubai. Of course, with Dr. Carol Pounds from Uganda, myself inclusive, join the ride, let's explore the wonders of the blueprint. The summit will be streamed live on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, Kingdom Life Tabernacle Uganda, as well as on our online radio, which is rave.radio1234.com.